What is a great way to practice Cisco ACI without actually having any ACI equipment? Or the only equipment available for you is actually in production and your request for a small ACI fabric to lab with keeps getting denied? Let's find out. To answer that question, it's the Cisco ACI Simulator. The Cisco ACI Simulator is a great free solution for learning ACI. You can even get it up and running on a laptop if you have enough resources. This is a virtual appliance that actually simulates an ACI fabric with an APIC controller, leaves, and spines. There are some feature limitations with this that I'll cover later in the video, but if you wanna get familiar with things like initial APIC configuration, adding spines and leaves to the fabric, building out ACI constructs and policies like tenants, bridge domains, and more, then the ACI simulator is a great choice. One of the coolest things that I like about it personally is the ability to use automation tools like Postman, Ansible, and Terraform to automate the configuration of your ACI fabric. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly step-by-step -step how you can install the ACI simulator yourself at home on an ESXi server for free. Now, if you don't have a dedicated server to run this, you can use a regular PC with something like VMware Workstation Player. That works great too. All right, let's do this. The first thing that you need to do is go to the Cisco software downloads page for the ACI simulator. I'll include a link to this page in the description of this video, so don't worry. If you're not able to download any of these files, it's probably because the Cisco account that you're using doesn't have the privileges or rights to do so. Here is the downloads page for the ACI simulator. On the left, you're gonna see all of the different versions that they have. Today, I'm gonna to be installing 5.25C. This is the latest version as of July, 2022. But if you wanted to download any of the earlier versions, you're able to do that here on the left-hand side. Now that I have 5.25C selected, you can see here on the right that there are individual files or parts, specifically parts one through eight. We need to download them all. Now, each part has a pretty large file size. As you can see, each one is about 12 gigs. So if you were to download all eight, that's almost 100 gigs worth of files that you're downloading. So you wanna make sure that you have enough space on whatever drive you're downloading them to. I've already downloaded all eight parts and all eight parts are in this folder that I have here. Once you've downloaded all of the required parts, you need to concatenate all eight parts or merge the eight parts into a single file. To concatenate the eight parts on Windows, I'm gonna open up the Windows command prompt and I'm gonna navigate to the folder where the images have been downloaded to, and then I'm going to use the type command, press space bar, and then I'm gonna put the first few letters of one of the files, press tab so that it auto completes the rest. I'm gonna backspace just a little bit, and then right after the word part, I'm gonna put an asterisk. The asterisk is gonna make it so that I don't have to type out the file names for all eight parts. After I do that, I'm gonna press space bar, greater than sign, spacebar, and then what do I want the name of the final file to be? For me, I wanna keep it simple, so I'm gonna type ACI, press tab to autocomplete, and I'm gonna backspace just a little bit to right after ACI sim and then the version. I'm gonna put dot OVA, and then I'm gonna hit enter. Here you see ACI sim, the version name, and then part one. Then you're gonna see part two, part three, all the way to part eight. This process does take a while, so give it some time. Last time I did this, it took about 30 minutes. So just let it run, and I'll come back as soon as it's done. Okay, perfect, the process is complete. I now have a single file named ACI sim 5.2-5c.ov. It's the first file that's highlighted. You can see on the right that the file size is almost 100 gigs in size. And what I can do now is I can actually delete these eight parts because I don't need them anymore. Now I'm ready to jump into ESXi and create the virtual machine from this OVA. So here on ESXi, I'm gonna highlight virtual machines. I'm gonna right click and create slash register a virtual machine. Of these three options, I'm gonna select the middle option, deploy a virtual machine from an OVF or OVA file. Here it says, enter a name for the virtual machine. I'll call it ACI SIM 5.2. Dash 5C. And then I'll just drag this OVA right into here. All right, perfect. Now I'll click next. I'll select this data store that I want to place it in. Next, VM network, thin provisioning, power on automatically. I'm going to uncheck this and I'll show you why once it's done. I'm going to click next and then finish. Now I can see here in my task that it is going through the process of creating the virtual machine. And once this completion percent gets to 100, that's how I'll know I'm done. All right, the ACI simulator VM is finished being created. I'm gonna right click it. I'm gonna go here to edit settings. 
and this virtual machine will not start if the CPU is greater than eight. This is because I'm using the free version of ESXi, so I'm gonna change it from 16 to eight. I'm happy with the memory, 24 gigs is fine. I'm gonna hit save, and now it's time to power on the virtual machine by clicking this nice green button here that says power on. As it's booting up, I'm gonna go right here and click console, open console in new window, so we get a nice big screen to see the boot process. All right, so it says here that the default simulator topology consists of one APIC, one leaf, and one spine. If you want, you can select a large topology that has three APICs, two leaves, and two spines. Keep in mind that if you select the large topology, you're gonna need more resources, more RAM, and more CPU. I don't wanna use a large topology, so I'm gonna hit no here. And it tells you that it's selecting the small default topology. Starting APIC 1, that's a good sign. All right, now it's time to go through the initial APIC setup. You're gonna have options like the fabric name, the TEP address pool, the infra VLAN ID. Keep everything default, just accept the defaults for every option except for the management IP address and the default gateway. That's the only thing that you should be changing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit enter and accept all these default values for all these options for the fabric ID, the fabric name, the number of active controllers, standby controller, controller ID, standalone APIC cluster, pod ID, controller name, TEP address space, VLAN ID for the infra network, address pool for the BD multicast addresses, IPv6, no. So you can see what I did there is I just accepted the default values for all those options. Here's where it says enter the IPv4 address that you wanna to use to manage the APIC. This and the default gateway are the only things that you should change. So I'm gonna do 192.168.1.245 slash 24. Enter the IPv4 address for the default gateway. This is something you need to change. 192.168.1.254. You wanna change it so that it matches your environment. Enter the interface speed. Again, default is auto. I'm gonna hit enter. Do I wanna do strong passwords? Here, I'm actually gonna type no. This is just a lab. I don't care to do any complex passwords. So I'm gonna put Cisco123, Cisco123 and hit enter. Now the last thing it's gonna ask you is, would you like to edit the configuration? And the default option is no. So do you wanna change anything that you already did? I don't want to change anything, so I'm gonna hit enter for no. Now that it's going through the rest of its boot process, we wanna see the APIC login prompt. That is gonna be a good sign if we see that. Okay, there we go, we see APIC login. One thing that I like to do is I like to open a command prompt and just make sure that I can ping the IP address that I gave it. That's gonna let me know if there's gonna be any issues. So with the command prompt open, I'm gonna do ping 192.168.1.245 and I have reachability, perfect. I should be able to HTTPS from any browser. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is paste the IP address here. I already have it saved. So HTTPS 192.168.1.245 and hit enter. All right, that's looking good so far. I'm gonna click advanced. And then right here, I'm gonna click continue. Let's give it some time. And I have this beautiful APIC login prompt version 5.25C. Let's go ahead and get logged in. The username was admin Cisco123 for the password and I'm gonna hit enter. All right, meet Cisco APIC 5.25C. Click let's go, and it's gonna tell you what's new and if you wanna start the ACI fabric setup. And from here, you can do a lot of things. You can check the system settings. You can go to tenants and start creating tenants and EPGs and application profiles. The fabric tab, if you wanna see the topology. Fabric membership, if you wanna start adding the spines and leaves to the fabric, but I'll save those for another video. But that's really all there is to it. Downloading and installing the ACI simulator is very easy. Okay, great, the ACI simulator is up and running and I was able to log in successfully and navigate around in the GUI. Now, ideally, the next steps would be to finish the discovery process by adding or registering the leaves and spines to the ACI fabric, or maybe I could create some tenants and EPGs, but I'll save those for future videos. 
Hopefully you were able to follow along and get the ACI simulator up and running as well. As far as limitations in the ACI simulator, the main thing is that it uses simulated switches. So it's not possible to test the data path. Now, maybe that changes in the future, who knows? Also, every time you power off and on the ACI simulator, that config is gone and you need to complete the initial setup from scratch. But by using automation, you can rebuild that ACI fabric in seconds. But there is a lot of things that you can do, so I highly encourage you to go check it out. That's going to be about it for this video. If you found it helpful and think that it might help someone else as well, then let me know in the comments, hit that like button, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It doesn't cost anything, and it helps the channel grow. Thanks everyone, have a great day, lab on.